Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to say, call all Yahweh. By Hashem Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. That's all praise to the Most High in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ. Um, it's your brother Tazarak from Phoenix Sakari, of course. Um, speaking about free will, right, is a topic that's brought out a lot when you talking to Christians or whoever believes in it. Um, do we have free will, right? Um, of course, there's vocabulary that goes with it, foreknowledge, predestination, decree, um, of course, free will, uh, and things of that essence, right? Foreknowledge is just you knowing something that's going to happen in the future. Um, predestination, meaning you already, it was destined for that to happen. A decree is you giving um, uh, or, or ordaining something to happen, right? No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And free will basically going into you have the right to move around and do what you want to do without being held to the standards of fate or something that is, you know, is destined to happen, right? You could do whatever you want. Now, some people say you got the free will to do anything, right? Other people might say, you know, God, like the bigger, the grand scheme of things, the major things that's happening in the world, that's going to happen regardless, right? But we each have our own free will um, of what we can choose in life, right? Just like they might say, you know, Christ coming back, that's not something that we can choose is going to happen or not, right? But if we want to choose, if we want to serve Christ or not, that's up to us, right? So it's our duty, well, it is my duty in this video um, to prove, now we're going to be going over three topics, of course. The first one is, do we have the free will to choose our own path, right? Another one is, does, uh, well, God does as he pleases, right? He can do whatever he wants. And then the third one is, does Christ himself have free will, right? That is the most important thing because if Christ didn't have his free will, us being lesser than Christ, we don't have that, that, um, that treasure or that luxury to have something that he don't, right? <clears throat> so those are the three topics on this subject that we finna get into, um, Without further ado, we're going to start off with Deuteronomy 30. All right. Let me have a bet you. See, I almost messed up, y'all. Right. Deuteronomy 30. Um, and this is something that somebody might be able to bring to the table um, dealing with free will. Right. Now, there's plenty of scriptures um, concerning free will. And, hey, this is a this looks like we have free will. But again, we have the illusion of free will. Without that illusion of free will, what would be our purpose in life? There wouldn't be our purpose in life, right? Um, we'll just be robots roaming around. Give me one second, Sean. So, okay. so um. Let's get into it, right? So somebody can read Deuteronomy 30 and 15, right? It says, see, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. Um, verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Here, somebody can pull the card saying that, this is speaking about free will because it tells you to choose life, right? The issue with this is very simple, right? Again, it is an illusion, of course, choose life, right? But of whatever you do in life, God already ordained that to happen, right? Because what you're saying is, is that you now operate in a way that Yahweh is unaware of, right? You're able to go outside of his will and establish your own free will, right? And that wouldn't make him omniscient nor omnipotent, right? He wouldn't be all knowing and he wouldn't be all powerful if we could do whatever we wanted, right? So it's very plain. When you read it slowly, it says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, even in 15, it says, see, I've said before thee, uh, before thee this day, life and good and death and evil. This is speaking about the blessings and the curses that Moses had um, spoke to the children of Israel. If uh, this braid is making, 
my neck itchy. Um, if this is speaking about free will, verse number one would be a major contradicting uh, uh, verse, right? So in verse one, it says, and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I set before thee. In verse one, Moses says, it's going to happen when you go through the blessings and when you go through the curses. So in verse 15, of course, he says, see, I set before thee this day, life and good, death and evil. And in verse 19, he says, choose life. If we had our own free will, we would choose life. But the problem is, is that Moses already told us that we were going to go through the curses, meaning he already known that we were going to forsake the law. We were going to turn our back from the commandments of the Heavenly Father, and we were going to have to go through those curses. This is why he says it's going to happen in the future. The blessing and the curse, which I set before thee, and thou shalt call them the mind among all the nations. Right here, they're not among all the nations. Right? They weren't scattered. They're leaving Egypt. So he's letting us know that in the future, you're going to be scattered. The only way that we would be scattered is if the curses fell upon us. Right. And we were scattered through the force or, or through the um, through the um, through the way of slavery. Right. Enslavement with other nations. So he's already telling us, bro, you finna go through the curses, meaning you're going to disobey the Heavenly Father. Right. Already. Excuse me. Already. Chapter 30 is already letting us know. Listen, you ain't got no free will, partner. He, it's not going to happen. Right. So. That's just that. I wanted to start off with that first and foremost. Now let's get into. We're going to touch on a lot of New Testament scriptures dealing with um, free will, but we're, we're going to be jumping back and forth. Right. But this again, there's plenty of scriptures on free will and everybody has tens of thousands, not tens of thousands, but hundreds of precepts and thousands of precepts to show that we do not have free will. Put them in the comment section right or make a video right and push it um as i'm pushing this video right use all these precepts and then add your own precepts to it right lb gets smarter too right john 6 we're gonna read verse 44 <clears throat> this is more deep than what we actually think it is right john 6 and 44 says no man can come to me except the father which hath sent me draw him and i will raise him up at the last day. Watch this. That word for draw is G1670, right? And it says to draw, to drag off, metaphor, to draw by inward power to lead or compel. I want to focus on to draw, to drag off, right? To draw or to drag off seems more physical, right? So what are some situations to where people were physically dragged to do the will of the heaven, to do the will of the heavenly father? Habakkuk was legit dragged to do what the Lord had intended to him, right? Habakkuk 1, so I can bell in the dragon, 1 and 33. It says, at that time, the prophet Habakkuk was in the land of Judah. He had cooked a stew. This is in the GNT. He had cooked a stew and crumbled bread into it. He was carrying a bowl of it to the workers who were out in the fields harvesting grain. When an angel of the Lord spoke to him, Take the food you are carrying and give it to Daniel, who is in Babylon in the pit of lions. Habakkuk is in the land of Judah. Daniel's in the land of Babylon. The angel saying, take the stew that you just made and give it to Daniel. Watch this. <clears throat> Habakkuk answered, sir, I've never seen, I've never been to Babylon. I don't know where the pit of lions is. Hey, man, I don't know what you're talking about in the land of Babylon. First and foremost, I don't know where that's at. I don't know where no damn lions den is. And I, it damn sure can't get it to him before this thing gets old, right? It's going to be spoiled by the time I get there. Watch what the angel do. First of all, yikes, this hurt. I know it hurt, right? Well, I don't know it hurt. Verse 36. So the angel grabbed the prophet by the hair and took him to Babylon with the speed of the wind. He sent him down near the pit of lions. Habakkuk called out, Daniel, Daniel. God sent him, God sent you some food here. Take it. First of all, 
I just want y'all to imagine being yanked by the hair. Now imagine being flown from the land of Judah to Babylon by your hair. He was forced. He was, like John 6 and 44 says, he was dragged to the land of Babylon, right? He was drawn to the land of Babylon out of the land of Judah. Um, so the uh, right here, verse 38. It says, when Daniel heard Habakkuk, he prayed, God, you did remember me. You never abandoned those who love you. Then he got up and ate the meal and God's angel immediately took Habakkuk home. Now, I would hope <laughs> that the angel carried him in a more comfortable way, but we don't know, right? Whatever God intended for Habakkuk to be dragged back. But that is an instance of where um, you, we see somebody being dragged to do the will of the Lord, right? Habakkuk didn't have a choice, right? He said, listen, I don't know where that's at. The angel just picked him up and just, mm, you know what I'm saying? Took him where he needed to go, right? Now, of course, we have the infamous Jonah. Jonah 1, uh, we see from verse 1 and 2, the Lord told Jonah to go to Nineveh and prophesy against it, right? Verse 3, but Jonah rose up to flee to, into Tarshish from the presence of Yahweh and went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, right? <clears throat> now, did Yahweh tell him to do something and he didn't do it? Yes. But if you are deceived to think that Yahweh didn't force him to have that spirit, just keep watching and we're going to figure out if Yahweh controls people's spirits to go against them. Just stay tuned, right? <clears throat> um, verse, uh, they're getting scared. They're questioning why they're doing this, right? Um, and then they threw him over the boat, right? Verse 10 or verse 17, it's lucky. And now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. The fish didn't even have its own free will to have its day. That, that fish was prepared that day to swallow up Jonah. Meaning what? If the fish was prepared to swallow up Jonah, that means Jonah was prepared to go into the fish's belly. Meaning what? It was all part of God's plan for Jonah to be inside of that fish's belly. Is that free will? Does that sound like free will? No. If something was prepared to... It, it, <clears throat> okay, let's pause. If the fish was going to eat Jonah, right? Not by the force of chewing, but just, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that means Jonah was destined to go in that fish's belly that day at that specific time and get on that specific boat and deal with those specific men for all of these things to happen. Right. Um, second chapter, of course, we see Jonah praying um, to the Heavenly Father out of the um, the fish's belly. And the last one, it says, and Yahweh spake unto the fish. He spoke to the fish. <clears throat> um, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Right. So the fish swam to wherever it was told to go and vomited Jonah out where Jonah was supposed to go. Now watch this. Look at this. Uh, um, and the word of Yahweh came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go into Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Right? Go teach what I just told you to teach. And so Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of Yahweh. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. Right? So Jonah was forced to go there. Right? But of course, even we see that the whales obey the word of the Lord the same way as Jonah had to. Right <clears throat> now, those two instances, right? Bell the dragon, and of course, Jonah, we see that they were um, physically dragged, okay, physically dragged to go do what Yahweh uh, uh, has planned for them, right? But the second one says to draw by inward power, right? Of course, we know that God controls all the spirits, and what we just shown were physical. Um, physical um um situations where he physically dragged them to go do something right now let's get a spiritual example where Yahweh dragged somebody or told somebody to do something physical right first kings 19 and 22 oh just kidding <clears throat> i'm messing up first kings 22 and 19 boom it says and he said who Yahweh? Hear thou, therefore, the word of Yahweh. Oh, just kidding, not Yahweh. Hear, there, 
hear thou therefore the word of Yahweh. I saw Yahweh sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on the right hand and on his left. What is this? The divine counsel. And Yahweh said, who shall persuade Ahab? This is spirits, right? This is not fleshly people sitting down having some wine and some lamb. This is spirits. Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? First and foremost, if we stop right here, the conversation is who's going to make this man fall and everybody else fall at Ramoth Gilead? This is not a, hey, Ahab just fall, fell at Ramoth Gilead. What we finna do now? No, they're, go they're trying to plot to make him do something. And one said on this manner and another said on that manner, right? They're going back and forth. Hey, we, 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 we. Boom, verse 21. And there came forth a spirit. Where do spirits reside at? The inward part, right? <clears throat> um, and stood before Yahweh and said, I will persuade him. And Yahweh said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also go forth and do so. Yahweh just told this spirit after it just said, I'm going to spiritually cause him to do something, right? Letting you know that he dragged him spiritually from a righteous prophet to a false prophet, right? He is now lying when he should be telling the truth, right? Letting you know that this was forced by spirit. Um, and Yahweh said, go and persuade him and you're going to prevail. Did Ahab have an option of whether he wanted to choose God or not when God just said he's going to be a lying prophet? No. So what do we see? We see an uh, instance where we see men dragged to do something that was good. And then we see men who are dragged to do something inwardly that was evil, right? So those are certain things to think about when talking about John uh, 6 and 44. Now watch this, right? Later on in John, right? 6 and 63, right? It is the spirit inward part that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. I almost thought I didn't turn my camera on. The words, the words, excuse me, that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Yahweh Shai knew, I'm sorry, for Yahweh Shai knew from the beginning who they were that believe not. Before, let me tell you something. If I know from the get-go that certain people are not going to believe, that's telling everybody these people don't have a free will, right? If Yahweh I knew that somebody was not going to believe, no matter what you tell them, they don't have free will. He knew, bro, you're not going to believe. But here's what's crazy. It says, and who should betray him? I'm sure that when Peter was told that... Before that cock crows two times, you're going to deny me three times? I'm sure Peter was in the spirit that I will never betray Christ. Want to know why I know that? Because he said it. But even Christ knew you're going to deny me, telling us what? Peter didn't have a choice. He was going to deny the Messiah. That's not free will. If Peter had his free will, he would have never done something like that. But Christ knew he was going to do it the same way Christ knew Judas was going to betray him before he ever even thought of it. Letting you know what? Both of them two did not have their own free will. So what do we draw from this? We don't have free will, right? We have an illusion of free will so that we can enjoy life, right? To make us seem like we have some type of control over what we do in life. But in all actuality, we don't, right? That's why it says the testimony of Yahweh Shai is what? The spirit of prophecy, meaning you're going to say something's going to happen before it happens. That's not free will. If, you, if we were told that we were going to be delivered out of America and we're going to be brought into the wilderness and all nations are going to be subjugated unto us when we walk into the kingdom, that's not free will. Because if it was their will, their will would that they would not be subjugated unto us, but they don't have a choice, right? <clears throat> Verse 65, this is the point. 
Now, mind you, we're speaking about spirits, right? Through the spirit, Christ understood who, who wasn't going to believe and who was going to betray him. Through the spirit, he understood that before it, it became a carnal thing. But watch this. We're talking about it was the spirit that quickened it. Verse 65. And he said, therefore, I said unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father, except what was given unto him. The spirit was given unto him to worship Yahweh through Yahweh. Unless you were given that spirit, you're never going to do it. Right. Letting you know what Yahweh has to give the OK for you to receive that righteous spirit. If not, you're not going to get it. So the same way we see in uh, 1 Kings 22, starting at 19, Ahab getting that evil spirit. You, if you're serving, serving Yahweh by keeping these commandments and having faith in Yahweh Shai, you were given that spirit by the Heavenly Father to do that. That's why we beg Yahweh to allow us to retain the spirit. Right. To allow us to retain the knowledge, wisdom and understanding that he has given us outside of that. Boy, you did not choose this path. Right. That's why it says many are called, but few are chosen. Right. You got selected on the team. Your head better be happy. Right. Because yeah, I was team captain and there ain't no other team captains on this motherfucker. Right. Yeah, I was. You go over here and you go over here. That's what it is. Right. But watch this. This is a cold cut. Right now, a lot of these dealing with Jonah, dealing with Bell and the Dragon, dealing with um First Kings uh, uh 22 or uh, with Ahab, um, those are more of like understanding of the concept of free will, right? And now if somebody's giving you the time to have a conversation about it, I would of course bring those out. But when you got these un uh, these hard headed, these stiff necked um Negroes that won't let you get a full sentence off. I'm going to Romans 8 first, right? Romans 8 starting at 19 is the go-to because I'm going to hold you to the standard to answer these questions. Me personally, I like to read the verse and make them explain it, right? Some people like to read it, explain it, and then ask questions. Me personally, I like, listen, I'm going to read it and I want you to explain it, right? Because I want to know what you got to say about this because um, the proof of the burden is on them when they talk about free will. Right. So Romans 8 and 19 for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God for the creature. Who's the creature? Us. We're the creature. Cool. Was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjugated the same in hope. So the same man who subjugated people in hope is the same man who subjugated everybody to vanity. Watch this. If you ain't hip to new translations or different translations, catch up, okay? Right? Because watch this. <clears throat> um, In the NLT, it says, against its will. Hold on. Against my free will, all creation was subject to God's curse. This is it is cold, right? So if you hit to our Instagram, go follow the Instagram, Sakari underscore Phoenix 1715. I think that's what it is. Just look up Sakari Phoenix and you'll, it'll pop up. I ask a question, a question, because he's saying, why do I have to suffer for what other people did? Right. We as men, like mankind, are suffering from what Adam did. Do we have the free will to not suffer what Adam did? No, we have to suffer that same curse that Adam put us in, letting us know what? We don't have the free will to escape it, right? We're going, I would have said we're going to die, but if Christ doesn't come back, you're going to grow old and you're going to perish, right? Your body's going to decay and you're going to go back up to the heavenly father. But most importantly is we were all subjugated unwillingly to God's curse, right? So <clears throat> if we have free will, why is this speaking about this? Right. It says, verse 21, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Right. We can stop right there. Um, But again, I want you to explain verse 20. Right. If you, if you ain't got an explanation of verse 20, you want to run around, run around. But guess what? We finna hit you with some more. Right. Let's go. Yeah. This is another heavy hitter. Right. First Peter. Two and eight in the GNT. Right? It says, and another scripture says, 
This is the stone that will make people stumble. Ooh, this is the stone that's going to make people stumble? Okay, the rock that will make them fall. Okay, they stumble because they did not believe in the word. Such was God's will for them. Hold up. <clears throat> it was God's will for certain people not to believe. One, that's not an all living God because, I mean, he he's setting people up to fall. Now, those... Evil. Four. I think it's in boom. Proverbs sixteen and four. I forget this. Yahweh has made all things for himself. Watch this. Yea, even the wicked. For the day of evil. Hmm. No. I had. Okay. Got a precept. And I totally forgot about this precept. And I think it's worthy to be brought up. Hey, what are you doing? All right. Um. 39, but we're going to hold that though, right? So it was God's will for them to not understand it. And in Proverbs 16 and 4, it says that he created the wicked, wicked for the day of evil. Somebody got to die, right? Okay. Um, Even dealing with, you know, if you want to just ask him a question outside of the scriptures, like, hey, uh, when Christ comes back, are people going to die? Yes. Were those people destined to die? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. He. The conversation is over at that point, right? Romans 11 and 7 in the NLT. Watch this. Because now we just got how it was God's will for some people not to understand and not to believe on the word. Now we're about to get both, right? To believe and not to believe. It says, so Romans 11 and 7 in the NLT. So this is the situation. Most of the people of Israel have not found faith, have it's like it. Most of the people of Israel have not found the favor of God they are looking for so earnestly. A few have. Most have not. But a few have. The ones God has chosen. Okay. So the few that have found favor, God chose them to find favor. But the rest or it's like it. But the hearts of the rest were hardened. Hold on. Hold on. God hardened the hearts of most of our people and he chose some of us letting us know that he's picking and choosing which ones he wants listen when you eat a bag of skittles if you uh, we're not even gonna talk about that i'm gonna start a whole war i'm just saying there's certain skittles you should not eat there's certain jelly beans you shouldn't eat and there's certain john branches you just you, you, we just don't do that right especially starburst um I don't eat candy no more, so most of them probably unclean, like a motherfucker, but I get the point. Well, come on, bro. Um, the whole Bible has to go cohesively with the whole thing, right? We are finding in the New Testament how God has to draw you, how God has to pick you, has to give you the spirit. He hardens certain people's hearts. He doesn't allow them to believe it. Isaiah speaks about the same thing in Isaiah 44 and 8 or 18. 18. It says, <clears throat> um, they have not known nor understood. For he, Yahweh, hath shut their eyes that they cannot see and their hearts that they cannot understand. This is why I don't, I refuse to get frustrated. Um, I was telling my, my soldiers out here and in Vegas, I refuse to get frustrated with people who just cannot see the simple things, right? I refuse to allow it to mess my whole day up because now I understand and I've been understanding that the Most High has put a cloud over your eyes and over your minds to not understand simple things, right? It is Yahweh's will. This is why you should not get frustrated. Of course, I get irritated, but just know in the back of your head, Yahweh has not allowed some of your family members and friends to understand even the simplest of the doctrine. 
because he just doesn't want them to, right? It's that simple. Mm. That's it on that, right? Of course, you got a the two or three witnesses, but we got a gang of witnesses in this time. Right, Isaiah 29 and 9, it says, Stay yourselves and wonder, cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. What is this speaking about? Their doctrine, right? There are people who have off doctrines. Why? Because they chose these doctrines? Because they chose not to serve our um, Lord in Christ, Yahweh Shah? Is that the reason why they have off doctrines? Because they felt like they shouldn't do that? Or, verse 10, for Yahweh hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and hath closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, the seers hath he covered. Yahweh has forced these people to cling on to off doctrines, right? What are we proving? Topic number one, you do not have the free will to choose your own path. Right. You don't. OK, we're going to get one more and then we're going to transition to the most high does what he wants. Right. Jude. Oh, no. Right. Do I want this? No, we can do this. Right. It says, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Oh, Dale, watch this. So you tell me what does ordained mean? G4270. It means to write before of time, of old, set forth, or designated beforehand in the scriptures of the Old Testament to depict, to portray openly, to write, so on and so forth, right? So this was something that was established, and it was going to happen before it happened. But it says some of these people are written, they're ordained to what? To the condemnation, right? Listen. Judgments, judgments, condemnation of wrong, the decision whether serve, uh, severe or mild, uh, forensic sense, the sentence, the punishment with which one is sentenced, condemnate, con okay, listen, it's getting late, it's getting late, it's about that time, that's where I'm going to start messing up words, um, y'all get it, condemnation, damnation, condemned, avenge, so on and so forth, right, there are certain people, like Proverbs 16 and 4 says, for the day of evil. Okay, so now we finna transition to the most high does what he wants, right? Um, look, give me one second. Uh, Isaiah 46 and 10, it says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying... My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Neat, bro, I will do whatever I want. It's like when Pops told you, this is my house, and I'll do whatever the hell I want, right? If I want to kick my feet up and tell you to get a remote that is two feet from me, I can do it because it is my house. If I want to eat, listen, the first time I got my apartment and I ate cereal on the couch, I was sitting in there like, who's going to tell me not to? My dad, of course. I will still respect my dad if he told me not to. It is whatever, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> In my house. Right? But again, his counsel going to stand. He going to do whatever he wants to do. You know, for... Right? Yeah, how is funny. I don't care what nobody says. Yeah, how is hilarious. I love you, how. Okay? And if you think God is all serious and he ain't got jokes, you should read your Bible more. Because Yahweh is hilarious. Ooh, I got to go over Esther. Yahweh is hilarious. What he did to, um, let me not, because I'm just going to start reading. I'm just going to keep going on a lesson, right? Daniel 4 and 35 in the NLT. It says, all the people of the earth are nothing compared to him. Compared to Yahweh, ain't nobody on earth a damn thing, right? It says, he does as he pleases among the angels of heaven. And among the people on earth, God does whatever he wants. No one can stop him or say to him, what do you mean by doing these things? Now, this is going to transition into the next verse that is cold and transitioning, right? <clears throat> um, No element of P. This is blatantly saying, 
Yahweh can do what he wants with the angels. He can do what he wants with the people. Who going to stop him? He created everything, right? If I have things in my house and I want to break things in my house, who going to stop me? You going to stop me? Well, I'm just going to throw a plate at you. <laughs> I'm not going to throw a plate at you. Don't look at me like that. Romans 9. Can I get this? Right, let's do this. Romans 9, 19 through, let's be safe for 22. And C A V C E V the Kiv, the Siv. Right? Romans 9 and uh, 19. Now, mind you, we just read um, Daniel 4 and 35 where Yahweh said he could do whatever he wants and who won't stop him. Right? Romans 9 and 19 says, someone may ask, how can God blame us? If he makes us behave in the way he wants us to. But my friend, I ask, who do you think you are to question God? Does the clay have the right to ask the potter why he shaped it uh, the way he did? Does a potter have the right to make a fancy bowl and a plain bowl out of the same lump of clay? God wanted to show his anger and reveal his power against everyone who deserved to be destroyed. But instead, he patiently put up with them. If you read Romans 9, starting at 10, all the way to verse, where am I? Listen, if you ain't got a pop, pocket, a pocket Bible, <laughs> a pocket Bible, uh, you're lacking, man. Get you a pocket Bible. You can find them on Amazon. I just got this thing and fell in love with it. Now, I don't know if y'all noticed, but when it gets late, I talk a lot. So, the water for listening. Um, Romans 9, you can start at 10, of course, uh, speaking about um, Esau and uh, Jacob. But you can always go down to, or, but you can go down to verse 24. Yeah, you can go to verse 24, you can stop at 23, it doesn't really matter. Um, but all of that is speaking about there's no free will. Right. Of course, I'm going to read verse 10 just on my uh, or verse 11 off of my Bible it says for the children being not yet born, uh, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand not of works, but of him that calleth. Right. God can do whatever he wants. Right. Listen, if you was walking around and you banged your head for the most, I just wanted to smack you on the back of the head one time. Right. He did something wrong. You think that you could just mess up all your whole life and he's not going to punish you? Come on, man. Let's bring out this Sirach, though. Now, I've been waiting for this, right? Sirach 39. Shout out to the brother Daniela in Vegas for this. Because he, he, he put me on this verse. Right? Sirach 39 and 27. It says, all these things are for good to the godly. So to the sinner, they are turned into evil. There be spirits that are created for vengeance which in their theory lay on sore strokes. There are spirits, not bodies, but spirits that are created for vengeance. It says, in the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. He made them to inflict harm. You know what's crazy? This happened and was foretold in Isaiah 10, a prophecy of the Northern Kingdom because of their wickedness, right? So we see here, um, woe unto them that decree and righteous decrees that right grievances, uh, so like Isaiah 10 and 1, uh, grievousness, uh, which they have prescribed to turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the, the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. Um, keep going. So it says, without me, they shall bow down under the prisoners. And they shall fall under the slain, for all his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. This is speaking about the northern kingdom being evil and rebellious. Verse 5. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger and the staff in their hand is mine indignation. He's saying, I'm about to use these Assyrians to punish the northern kingdom. This is where we get the first beast, right? The lion with wings, right? The Babylonian and the Assyrians, right? This is where we have 
um, the northern kingdom in the Assyrian captivity and the southern kingdom in the Babylonian captivity. Right. Watch this. I will send him who the Assyrians against an hypocritical nation, the northern kingdom. And against the people of my wrath, will I give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. What does it sound like? This sounds like Sirach 39 and 28. There be spirits created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Bro, if the scriptures ain't working right now, right? Lord in Christ, this Bible is cold. So, boom, watch this. This is how we prove that it's dealing with the northern kingdom and not and not the southern kingdom. Um, it says, how be it, he meaneth not so, neither does his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off nations, not a few. Right? Um, for he saith, are not my princes altogether kings, are not Kalno and Karkamish, and not Hamath, are as God and not the man is. Um, right? This is Assyria talking. Right. Shall I not as I have done unto Samaria? Unto, OK, boom. So watch this. Right. So this is a serious saying. Not only am I finna mess up the northern kingdom, but now I'm finna attack the southern kingdom. But Yahweh didn't need that from him. Right. He only needed them to do away with the, not do away with, but to enslave the northern kingdom. It says, shall I not. As I have done unto Samaria, the northern kingdom and her idols. So do to Jerusalem and her idols. Right. The southern kingdom. Wherefore, it shall come to pass that when Yahweh hath performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high looks. Because he got proud and thinking that he can go do something with the southern kingdom, right? But it all works cohesively together because they go get punished regardless, right? For he saith, by the strength of my hand, I have done it and by my wisdom. For I am prudent and I have removed the bounds of the people and have robbed their treasures and I have put down the inhabitants and the inhabitants like a valiant man. Right. So they proud. So on and so forth. Verse 15. Shall the axe boast itself against him that he with therewith? Nigga, you're that axe. You're not the him that's moving it. What is he saying? I am the man. Assyria is my axe. This is the thing created for my vengeance. So when Israel goes off, I'm going to use the Assyrians to take the northern kingdom in this time frame. Right. He has other nations that he can use. Verse 29 in Sirach 39, it says fire and hail and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction, just like in numbers. Oh, why am I forgetting this? Um, the number 10. Bear with me, y'all. Numbers 21. I'm tripping. Right, this is why Numbers 21, what happened? Um, that's not what I'm looking for. Yeah, it is. Listen, y'all. Okay, boom. The bronze servant, right? Right, the Lord sent fiery serpents, right? Because again, that's one of his ways to punish people. Just like when he drove out the Canaanites with the hornets, that's what he used to punish people. Right. He uses beasts to punish people like uh, Eli, Eli, when them kids was making fun of his bald head and he sent them bears on him, the wild beast. Right. That is their job. Uh, some of the beasts. Right. It says, and they shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon the earth. They are where their spirits, their bodies and everything that they were made for and that they um, um, have in their possession is waiting for Yahweh's commandment when need is. And when their time is come, they shall not transgress his word. You're going to do what I tell you to do, right? Therefore, from the beginning, was I, I was resolved and thought upon these things, and I've left them in writing. How long will we be going at it? Ooh, 45 minutes. Listen, if you thugging it out with me, all praises, right? So now... 
let's get into we're about to transition into getting does Christ have his own free will and then we'll end it on that but I don't know okay boom so Iraq 18 and 3 says who governeth right speaking of Yahweh um who govern govern who governeth the world with the palm of his hand and all things obey his will for he is the king of all by his power dividing holy things among them from profane simple um <clears throat> i don't know if for skittles are clean i don't eat skittles but when i did eat skittles just know i'm separating them them red ones and then pink ones from them nasty yeah, yellow ones, right? And the green one, I'm cool with the yellow and green. Give me the pink and the red, right? I I can separate which Skittles I want because I'm in control of the Skittles, right? It has no use without me, right? It's just a Skittle, just waiting there. The same thing with humans, right? With mankind, with beasts, with the whole earth, it is nothing without Yahweh orchestrating the plan, okay? So now... We're going to transition into did Yahweh have his own free will? What am I doing, bro? Matthew 26 and 39. Yahweh prayed three times this prayer. And he went a little further, speaking of Yahweh and fell on his face, fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. What is he asking of the Father? I don't want to go on that cross. I don't want to be tortured. I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to go through none of this right now. If it's possible, please, Master, please don't make me go through this. Right? He's begging his father to withhold the punishment that he's about to go through. But watch what he says. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. What did he say? I don't have a say-so. I'm asking you, but I know you're going to do whatever you want to do, and I'm not going to disobey it, right? That's what made him the perfect example, right? That's what made that's what made him the lamb without blemish because he did everything the father told him to do, right? Being perfectly righteous. So here we're seeing that, of course, can Christ mow down 80,000 people? Yes. I mean, he is the son of the father. He is the son of Yahweh. What are we going to expect? When he comes back, he's going to have a, a just a garment filled with a red stain. So is it possible for him to just get off the cross and just throw the cross around killing everybody? Of course. But he didn't because he didn't have the will to do that because the father ordained him to do it. This is why it says he's the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Why am I forgetting that? First Peter, I got a different one, my friend. First Peter 1 and 20. What do you mean? What the hell did I take? First Peter 1. I might have typed in the wrong thing. Watch this. I'm going to read it in NLT. Right? So, of course, it says, verse 19, but with the precious blood of your Hamashiach as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Uh, Side note. Crazy how the serpent is always reckoned as evil doctrines, things that we're not supposed to be following. But lamb's blood is a, a antibiotic for snake venom. I don't know if y'all knew that. But yeah, so the blood of Christ, the same way in John 3 and 14, it says the same way Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness to heal our bodies from the snake bites is the same way that the son of man lifted up and ironically lamb's blood is antibiotics for snake venom so spiritually his blood being shed on that cross was for the sins that we have committed the same way that y'all not ready for that first peter 1 and 20 in the nlt it says god chose him who yahweh chose yahweh shy as your ransom long before the world began before y'all, before he was walking around, 
before Paul was walking around, before your black ass was walking around, Yahawashai was ordained to die on that cross. It was going to happen. There was nothing that's going to stop it. Before the world began, he was going to die on that cross. It says, but he has now revealed him to you in these last days. He just been revealed to you now. But just know when Adam was walking around, it, it was already ordained he was going down the cross. Right? When Jeremiah, Ezekiel, them powerful prophets like Daniel and Habakkuk, when they was walking around. Okay, possibly. When they was walking around, it was already ordained for him to die on that cross. Right? These things had to happen. No if, no ands, and no buts. All right, John 8 and 28 and the news translation. All right, he said to them, when you lift up the son of man, you will know that I am who I am. Then you will know that I do nothing of mine own authority, mine own free will. But I say only what the father has instructed me to say. Listen, I want you to walk around and you have somebody tell you what to say about everything. Tell me how you're going to feel. You're going you gonna to have free will? No. So if Christ is telling you he don't have free will, he understood that everything that he was going to say was ordained by the Heavenly Father. He understood that. Why don't you? You think that you have a capability that Christ don't? You think that you have a gift that Christ don't have? Listen, bro. We got to stop saying we got free will. So, um, of course, as always, if you found the video edifying, share the video, right? If you like the video, like the video. If you got precepts, you know what I'm saying? Definitely put them in the comment section uh, and help boost this, this, this word and this teaching, right? Um. It was beautiful through the spirit. Uh, my first time recording it too. And sometimes I gotta re-record it, right? Because I'll be messing up and I'll be putting words to words together too much. Right? But of course, it is through the spirit that the most high allowed it to go beautifully, and it was his will for me to do it one time so I could do something else and then take myself to sleep. Right. Um, so with that, of course, it was a pleasure um allowing um this edification to go out it was a pleasure for the most high to use me to put this edification out with that i want to say call all yahweh by shem hamashiach yahweh shah that's all praise to the most high name of his only begotten son stay tuned for las vegas right um we're going to las vegas more i'm going to las vegas more with a powerful brother uh war dog yaraya um and we're going to start pushing that right we got brothers you know going up in there we're going to create a uh ig and a um other things for that. So y'all stay tuned for that. Right. But again, call all Yahweh by Shem Mashiach El Shai. That's all praise to the most high name of his only God Son who the Lord is called Jesus Christ. Kwam Yashrava. And y'all stay safe out here. Shalom.